In this screencast, we'll give an overview of how to work with Gradle in IntelliJ IDEA. We'll look at creating new Gradle projects, importing projects, managing dependencies and running tasks. Let's create a new Gradle project. We need to choose the Java version to use. We're going to use the latest version of Java 8. If our project used other languages, we can choose those here, but for this demo, let's just stick with Java. Gradle projects need a group ID and artifact ID, so we'll enter those here. At this stage, we have some Gradle-specific options. Auto-import will automatically apply changes if you update Gradle's settings. We'll look at this later. The second setting is really useful for new projects, as it sets up the directory structure for your project, so we'll tick this. We'll explore the third option later. For this simple project, we don't need to worry about multiple source sets. We do want to use the Gradle wrapper for this project. By using the Gradle wrapper, it means that anyone who wants to work on this project's code doesn't have to install Gradle separately. We can choose a different project name and location if we want, but the defaults look fine here. IntelliJ IDEA has created a simple project for us, and as we requested, the default Java and test directories have been created too. If we look at the basic build.gradle file that was created for us, we already have a suggestion waiting. We could make a simple change to give us access to the Gradle sources and documentation. If we open the Gradle window, we can see the Gradle tasks that are available to us, and any dependencies that have been declared. The basic build file included a dependency on JUnit 4, so we can see this as well as the Hamcrest library that JUnit is dependent upon. These are also visible as external libraries in the project window with a Gradle prefix so you know where they came from. As you'd expect, IntelliJ IDEA gives you code completion in the build.gradle file. If we make changes to this file, IntelliJ IDEA detects this and offers suggestions. We can either apply the changes manually when we're ready, or we can enable auto-import to apply changes as they're made, so we don't have to remember to import them. IntelliJ IDEA has recognized that we're now using the Groovy plugin and has created the directories for our Groovy files. IntelliJ IDEA can add dependencies to our build file. We can search for the library we want by name or path and select the one we want. We'll see the new dependency and its transitive dependencies in the Gradle window and in the project window. The libraries needed by Gradle are also shown in the project libraries window, again with the Gradle prefix to show that these have been added via Gradle. Note that while it's still possible to add other external libraries here, and even use them in the IDE, as soon as the Gradle settings are reapplied, these dependencies are removed. Gradle projects should always use Gradle to manage the dependencies. We can use the Gradle window to see which tasks are available for us to run, and it's updated when we add new plugins which give us additional tasks. Running a task from here shows the output in the run window, either as a summary of stages with time taken for each step, or as the familiar command line Gradle output. We've looked at the basics of creating and working with a Gradle project. It's more likely we'll be working with an existing application that uses Gradle. Let's import a Gradle project. Selecting the folder for a project that contains a build.gradle file will usually mean IntelliJ IDEA imports the project as a Gradle project. However, selecting the build.gradle file itself is the most certain way to import the project as a Gradle project, and not some other format that may be in the project. We see similar options to when we created a new project. I'm not going to use auto-import on this project as it has a complex build which I don't want to be run every time I make a small change to the build.gradle file. I'm also not going to create directories automatically either, since this is an existing project and all the folders we need should already be there. We'll import this project without creating a separate module per source set, and later we'll look at the difference it makes if we do tick this box. This project does have the Gradle wrapper, so we'll use this. IntelliJ IDEA runs Gradle on the project when it's first imported to initialize it and bring in the dependencies. Once the structure of the application is understood, we're given a list of all the IntelliJ IDEA modules that could be created for the project, and we could choose which ones to create. We can see that IntelliJ IDEA has created modules for all the sub-projects in this Gradle project. It also correctly recognizes the source and test directories as defined in the Gradle build, even though this project doesn't follow the usual standard. Each of these modules has its own dependencies as defined by Gradle. Now let's see what a difference it makes to import this project with slightly different settings. Specifically, let's select Create Separate Module Per Source Set so we understand what this means. 
Because we've previously imported this project, we already have settings defined for IntelliJ IDEA. But what we want to do is override these with our updated settings. This time, IntelliJ IDEA not only suggests modules for each subproject, but also submodules for all the source sets in each module. This project has separate source sets for different types of tests, so these can all be set up as independent IntelliJ IDEA modules. We'll see why we might want this in a minute. Now each of these test folders is a module, not just a folder inside a larger module. This means that each of these modules has its own dependencies and doesn't simply share all the dependencies from the subproject. This may more accurately represent the Gradle build, so compiling and running inside the IDE gives the same result as compiling and running from Gradle. The Gradle window shows each of the subprojects that make up the application, including the different source sets with their own dependencies, and of course the tasks available. As we saw earlier, tasks like the test task can be run from here, and the test results will be shown as the familiar IntelliJ IDEA test results, along with the Gradle task output. But we can also run the tests, or a subset of them, from inside the IDE if we want. If the project needs the build to be performed by Gradle, for example, to generate code or to deploy artifacts, we can tick the Delegate IDE Build to Gradle setting. If we choose this, even when we run the tests through the IDE, IntelliJ IDEA will use Gradle to build the project before running the tests. In this video, we've looked at how to work with Gradle projects in IntelliJ IDEA. Take a look at the documentation for more details, or check out the YouTube channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.